You know, it's a fact. Most photographers these days work with a strobe. I mean, it's right here. It's a convenient source of light, and you can get tremendous results. But, you know, there are other ways to go, other ways to get your lighting. Quartz lighting, for instance, or constant source lighting, as it sometimes is called. Constant source as opposed to the quick flash of a strobe. Now, many people might think that quartz lighting for still photography is a thing of the past, but there's a tremendous array of quartz lighting equipment available. Sometimes it might be your first choice. I'm at the headquarters of Lowell Light in their showroom, and with me is Ross Lowell. Ross, thank you for being with us on World of Photography. It's a pleasure. You know, you really have revolutionized lighting in film and TV, and in fact, World of Photography is shot on location in We Light with Lowell Lights. Yeah. Exactly 25 years ago, I designed the first uh, portable location light, and since then, a number of other systems that uh, we've introduced. And it was designed for, uh, for my own film work and for a few friends who wanted to use the equipment. And since then, a lot of, it's, uh, a lot of the equipment's being used also for video, and now more and more for still photography. In fact, still photographers can work with strobe, and um, there are quite a few advantages to strobe, but there are also some disadvantages, and perhaps we should explore those. Let's talk about the positive aspects of using a strobe. Well, strobe is a uh, extremely bright source relative to its size. It's a fairly compact unit. It can be used on the camera, which makes it quite portable. And it can stop action. In addition to that, it's balanced for daylight, which has a number of advantages if you're mixing uh, strobe with, with a daylight source. Well, let's look at the other side of the coin. What are the negative aspects of using a strobe? The fact that the strobe is on the camera, although convenient, means that you've actually put the light in single worst place that uh, you can uh, uh, light from. And we can talk about that a little later. Right. Uh, the other thing is that it's very difficult to anticipate what the lighting is going to be like until you see the film processed or unless you're able to shoot Polaroid test shots of it. How about modeling lights that, that come on some strobes? Many professional strobe units have modeling lights, but in fact they're generally not balanced for each other. So if you work with more than one strobe unit, you're not sure what the balance will be. And since they're so dim, they have no effect on the uh, prevailing daylight that uh, may exist. And so you can't judge whether it's going to overwhelm it or underwhelm it, in fact. What are the advantages of constant source lighting? One of the advantages of a constant source light is that uh, there's quite a bit of control that can be introduced with the unit. With barn doors that uh, close in and out and can rotate, and with any number of accessories, such as the uh, diffusion glass that can be slipped into it, or a uh, cucoloris for making shadows, uh, a dichroic filter for correcting the light to approximate daylight, and uh, scrims to reduce the light, or in this case, it's a, uh, this is a graduated scrim which rotates. And here you have full light, here you have a uh, reduction of about 50%, and here you have reduction, even greater reduction, so that you can take, uh, you can reduce the areas that are too bright, such as a white dress or a background that's too light. And um, some people refer to it as painting with light or painting with shadow. So you can really get an idea of exactly what the light's going to do in your shot before the shot is taken. You can get an idea and you can um, make changes uh, in the interests of the greater control and, and uh, more effective lighting. Well, I've got to ask you, since we discussed the disadvantages of strobes, what would you say are the disadvantages of constant source lighting? Constant source light can be hot, which can be a problem in summertime in confined areas. One has to have the power available to use it. Can't uh, exactly plug it into a tree, can you? Well, and, you, and in old buildings, sometimes they're only you know, 15 or 20 amps. So you may want to work with more light sure. than that. And it, um, Compared with amateur strobe equipment, it, it's somewhat bulkier, although compared with professional equipment, it may in fact be uh, more compact and lighter weight. Mm -hmm. I think for certain, I think for, it depends on the kind of uh, subject being shot. Very often for portraiture and for uh, uh, product photography, food photography, tabletop kind of work, it's very important to really see the results that you're going to get and adjust accordingly. Uh, it certainly helps if one knows a great deal about lighting to begin with and, or can develop an eye to, uh, sure. uh, for, for greater sensitivity. But with, um, with many subjects, um, there's no question about it. Strobe is faster, 
simpler and um, solves an awful lot of problems. But once again, it, a lot depends on, uh, on where the lights are put. And uh, one can get great results both with strobe and constant source lighting. Ross, I'd like to invite you back for next week's show to show us a unique way to use constant source lighting, the one light approach. I look forward to doing it. Good.